We are back on Taking Care of Business uh, on Current Radio News Talk 1180. Clay, great uh, conversation with Shannon Grove. Nice conversation, but I'm really excited about our next guest. Yes, I am too. Michael Turnipseed from Current Tax. Michael, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, my friend. Thank you very much. Hey, I've got uh, your newsletter, by the way, is really, really first class, that uh, Current Tax e-letter. I, yes. I really, really like it. In uh, in the last one, you were talking about Kern's credit rating is at a crossroad. The state's credit rating is at a crossroad. I'm sorry, I said Kern. I meant the state's credit ra- rating is at a crossroad. Expand on that a little bit. Well, I think that the Standard & Poor's basically wanted to send the state a message to get your budget done on time or it's going to affect your credit rating dramatically. Well, they did get their budget done. Yeah, it was passed and everything. Uh, well, they did pass the budget, but that gets the whole discussion of Controller Chang. But somebody forgot to actually add up all the numbers. Oops, and we forgot. the biggest problem with the budget and the reason Chang was not going to approve their payment is the revenues and the expenditure columns didn't add up. Well, he said, I Somebody mean, you know. didn't take the five minutes on their calculator to, t- <laughs> you know, they make sausage in the back room. Somebody still has to run the calculator to make sure it works. Well, they forgot to do that, and Chang did. So uh, they're not going to get paid for a while. You mean, e- even with the gimmicks, they're just $1.5 billion off? I mean, what's $1.5 billion? That's nothing. Well, for... for Successful people like you, not much. But for most ordinary people like me, it's a lot. <laughs> well, that, that budget was just, it, it just seemed like it was just passed just so people could keep, keep a paycheck. And I was really surprised that Chang did what he did. That really astonished, astonished me, actually. Well, it was actually because, and I was reading in probably in the SAC B, I don't remember exactly where, that he really wasn't going to get into the structure of whether it was balanced or not. But when the revenues and the expenditure columns didn't equal zero at the bottom, he had to do something. He said, you know, I'm not going to argue whether it's gimmickry. What at least they could do is balance it. Mm -hmm. You know, put another column in, add borrowed money, add something, but they didn't even take the time to do that. So uh, I'm glad that um, it made him a pretty uh, interesting fellow for the last week anyway. Well, what surprised me more than anything else, Mike, is they've been working on this for over six months. But, you know, the game changes every day, and uh, it's going to be real interesting to see long-term how this all plays out and what the voters are saying. We now have our redistricting commission coming out with some quote-unquote non-political boundaries. So it'll be interesting to see how the Assembly and Senate look two years from now with clean districts. And uh, I've read a couple different articles that think the Republicans are going to get punished, not for just saying no, but by the moderates for not worrying what it takes to keep our schools open and things like that. There are, there are, there are people that really care about the services they get, and they they elect people not so much for their taxes, because there are actually people that say, I want certain services, and I am willing to pay for them. And we're at this, the fact now that schools are cutting back their school years. Uh, some people are talking dropping 20, 30 days off the school year. Uh, a lot of people find that unacceptable. Yeah, you know, it, it's th- there's a lot of insanity going on here in Sacramento. I mean, you know, first of all, they've got $6.5 billion more than they thought they had, and they spent it. They've increased the budget by $2.5 billion over last year. So there, there's $9 billion of the $10 billion deficit right there. I mean, that seems to be fairly logical to me, isn't it, to you? I mean, you know, what, what are we missing here? The, the problem that's happened over time, and there was another article I read a couple of weeks ago about that says California has the most highly educated legislature, the highest percentage with college grads, but they also have half the attorneys that they had 20 years ago. <laughs> so I don't know, but at least we used to balance our budget then. I didn't know that attorneys were necessarily good accountants, but at least I think they understood the need to have a balanced budget and do things. So it's 
we've had a whole change in term limits. I don't think were good things because and it, a lot of my good Republican friends, you know, we passed term limits to get rid of Willie Brown, but Willie Brown always balanced the budget. All term limits mean is you have a couple of terms in the Assembly, then a few terms in the Senate, then you get a run for congressional office, and then you get appointed somewhere. Uh, well, there aren't enough seats to go around because there's only 54 congressional seats. There's 120 legislators, so eventually there's traffic jams. But I think what happens, they do get appointed or they come back and run for county supervisors and or mayors, like in, especially in big cities like in L.A., like Anaheim, Kurt Pringle went back. In L.A. County, a number of former legislators are now on the board of supervisors and city council. So it's kind of a a flow back down the hill and start over again. But if you're a supervisor in L.A. County and there's 8 million people, you got 1.6 million constituents. You have more constituents than any other elected official in California. Wow. We're having a conversation with Michael Turnipseed. Michael, before we leave uh, that... Um the bonding issue. I want to talk about that for a quick second, okay? So right now, our our bond rating with the S&P is A-, minus, right? It's already as, just about as bad as, as any state in the union, yes. Okay, but, and they're looking at, they're looking at lowering it again. If they lower it again, doesn't that mean our interest payments are going to go up dramatically? I think they would go up substantially. Okay, so so now you're looking at, you know, uh, I don't I don't know how much debt we're financing, but you're looking at, you know, if they bump it up by three or four or five percent, which is probably what's going to happen if if our rating goes down, you're looking at an incredible amount of money that's going to be added to the deficit to just pay the inter- the additional interest on the debt because we're not credit re- worthy. Uh, we're currently, I think I read somewhere, we're paying about seven and a half billion currently in uh, in interest and principal costs on the bonds that we have, mm-hmm. and uh, that's almost approaching ten percent of our budget. This is part and due to the uh, uh, ballot box budgeting because there isn't a, a like a parks bond or other bonds that are out there for uh, research, medical research. We have all kinds of things in California we float bonds for. And that's coming home to roost. You know, on another situation, Michael, uh, recently they talked about selling a lot of the real estate assets and then leasing them back. Do you have any opinion or is any analysis done on that? Uh, No, not particularly. Uh, If there are things you don't really use anymore, I mean, like the Cow Palace in San Francisco. You know, at one time it was the arena, and now it's really past its prime, and it's just sitting on real estate. But if you don't need it, there's probably a case for that. But if you own office buildings and think you're going to rent them back because you're still going to need the office space, that doesn't seem to make sense to us. Well, I'd sure like to buy a couple of those and run them back because I think it'd be a pretty good tenant. At least today it is. I don't know what it's going to be like in another few years based on the tax base. Well, and, and the fact is that they're right. They are good tenants, and I think they uh, pay substantially high levels of rent because they're used to uh, what it costs to rent buildings in San Francisco and Los Angeles. So you could cut a sweet hog. Yeah, really. Another issue that uh, came up recently in reading your current tax e-letter, which is really a great letter, as Marty pointed out earlier, and and we need to let people know how they can get a hold of your office, as a matter of fact. So take a second and tell us how they can get involved with uh, your organization, who you are, and what you do, and how they can contact you. Well, we have a webpage, www.currenttaxpayers.org, and there's a contact page on that where you can... Uh, Email us at currenttax at currenttaxpayers.org. Uh, we do have an e-letter that you can subscribe to. Uh, uh, just email me, and I will add you to the list again at currenttax at currenttaxpayers.org. Uh, yeah, we've made some pretty substantial improvements on our web page and our email system. And currently, we're just right at about 500 people on our mailing list. So a few more, more than welcome. It's pretty easy in the day of a computer. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Uh, looks like we're going to run short on time here, but uh, we do want to talk a little bit, if you have for a second, about the companies that are leaving California and why. Well, I think 
uh, there was this uh, uh, story we distributed that shows that there's, there's been an increase in movement out of the state. Uh, certainty, I think, is one thing. If you're trying to build a business, you have to have some certainty in your planning. And if you're going to expand or do something, do you want to invest in California with the climate of uncertainty, uncertainty that we have? And I really don't think so. I think there, there are states out there that seem much more stable. Mm-hmm. Their legislators have a better appreciation for business. Yes. And it's just uh, mm-hmm. the golden state uh, has got a little tarnished. Yeah. Michael, people we, are looking at other opportunities. Yeah. Michael, thank you for coming on for a short segment like this, but we'd love to have you back. Well, thank you for the opportunity, and anytime I'd love to talk to you. We'll see you in 167 hours on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio, News Talk 1180.